Hi everyone, this is Aritra and Alpha Software Engineer at Google and welcome back to the channel. I've been coding for roughly 6 years now, including my entire 4 years of college. And there's a lot I've learned in the process and to be honest, I did not learn coding in like the right way to be honest. Like it was very unorganized and my approach towards a lot of things were questionable at best. Today I want to talk about what if I had to start learning coding again, like from scratch, if I did not know anything, how would I have approached that? What would have been my mentality, my thought process? What, how would I have started? What, what choices I would have made around a lot of things? So let's get started around that. Before that, on a side note, as you can see, the entire background has changed. That's because I moved to Hyderabad. I'm finally working back from office. And as all of you could have guessed, the Google Hyderabad office is amazing. So yep, on that note, <laughs> let's get started. Before we move forward, let me tell you about Newton School. Newton School gives you a chance to upskill yourself and take your tech careers to the next level. Irrespective of your background, Newton School provides you an opportunity to compete to work at some of the top tech companies out there. They have already had 1500 plus students placed and the number just keeps growing. They have multiple programs irrespective of your background. The program that I personally like the most is the program for freshers. The pro this program has a pay after placement policy, which ensures that you don't need to give any money up front and only pay after you are placed in a company. They are associated with 600 plus partner companies and have a 90% placement rate, which assures you that you are in safe hands. To know more about Newton School, feel free to check the description below. Picking a programming language is probably the biggest hurdle that people face when they are starting with coding. Uh, and it is understandable why it is. People feel that the language of their choice can make or break their career when it comes to coding. That's not necessarily true though. However, picking a language you're comfortable with writing when you begin with will help you a lot to learn things faster. So based on that, here are my two recommendations when it comes to language. Firstly, for someone who has a CS background, who has studied computer science, done some coding in the past, in school or out of their own interest, should pick up Java or C++. The reason is simple. Uh, these languages are more structured and are faster when it comes when in terms of languages like Python. At the same time, because they have prior experience with computer science, done coding before to some degree, however small, they would be able to adapt with the learning curve that comes with Java or C++. However, someone who has no coding background, they have never had to taken an interest in coding, but now they are. Uh, people coming from non-tech backgrounds into tech backgrounds, I would recommend starting off with Python because Python is very simple to write. It feels like writing English to a degree and it is very flexible in terms of how you write code, making, making sure that you, you can adapt to coding and enjoy coding in general from the beginning without getting into the nitty gritty of syntactical issues that come with Java and C++ and adapting to all of that. Uh, also, which resources should people use? I would say pick up a free course. Like I am someone who is a big advocate for free course and free code camp has its own YouTube channel, I guess, which I would recommend to everyone go there. They have basically uh, a lot of pre-recorded, pre-downloaded courses that exist out there and uh, like taught by professionals, right? Like proper professionals. And basically that's what a resource I have used a lot of times to learn new things. And Feed Code Camp's YouTube channel is a very good place to pick up a course on Python, let's say, and learn the language. Another recommendation I have is try to implement hands on practice when it comes to coding. So, for example, a lot of websites have basically getting started with Python, for example, right? Uh, so, basically, go search that and basically learn the language by coding it out. That is the recommendation. I think the Free Code Camp has that on its own website as well, but uh, in case it doesn't, because I don't remember, uh, do look it up on Google and you will find a lot of good resources. But get hand get hands on practice; it's very valuable. So once you have gotten the hang of the language, say you have learned how to initialize variables, write hello world code, sum of two numbers, switch case statements, if else statements, for loops, like the general basics. Uh, what objects, those kind of theory, what is an array, what is a list. The general theory uh, of the language, written some code on it, gotten hands on practice. The next recommendation, at least what I would have personally done is get more into the theory of the language. 
Now, obviously, I'm not I'm not saying that he learned how the language works behind the scenes. That's not what I mean by getting into the theory of language. I mean more like in the sense of theory of programming, data structures and algorithms, for example, object-oriented programming, for example. These are important computer science subjects and languages that will take you a long way. A lot of people, myself included, when when basically you get a hang of a language, you feel like, hey, now I want to get into problem solving. You you uh, you hear about lead code, and you are like, hey, now because I know a language, I should just go and straight on dive into lead code. Or you feel like because I know this, I am basically now a very good coder, or like now I have the hang of things, so I should probably just jump into a project. But before you do any of these things, I think my basic recommendation is learn data structures and algorithms, learn OOPs. Like these are the two subjects that I would stress on uh, the most. After, along with that, if you are basically having a language of your choice, right? Like if you have Java, learn Utils. If you have C++, learn STL. If you have Python, then learn basically collections that come with Python, right? So get the hang of the language, writing code, writing data structures, and then the next step that comes into the picture is problem solving. Like you don't dwell into problem solving before you get a hang of data structures and algorithms and OOPs because uh, you will eventually face a crisis when you suddenly jump into that because of a lot of reasons. I personally felt so. I know a lot of people who have felt the same thing. Uh, your, your knowledge is not mature to directly jump into lead code before uh, knowing the, like the basic data structures, algorithm, very basic questions on them. So that's my honest recommendation. Focus on theory and don't just jump into problem solving or doing projects. So once you're done with the uh, learning the pro theories and basic of programming, right? Like familiar with the data structure, familiar with your OOPs, understand all of it to some degree. Like I'm not saying that you're going to be a professional just by reading about it. What I'm saying is that you have some basic understanding of these things. The next thing you should do is like, honestly, I would recommend doing both two things and you can start both of them parallelly. One is problem solving. Uh, that is basically doing lead code and platforms similar to those. So when it comes to doing lead code, don't just jump into medium or hard questions. In fact, what I would be doing is start off with easy questions, sort them in order of de uh, decreasing order of accuracy. So in that way, the first question that I see is basically the easiest question lead code says it has that most people have solved it. And then basically go down slowly, slowly, slowly. That way basically I'm solving easy questions, learning slowly and my I, I'm not suddenly facing a huge learning curve, which might basically like lower my confidence, right? When it comes to like, or like just put me in that zone, ki mere se ho paega, which is not something I want to go to, especially when I'm start, starting to do things. The next part of the world is uh, do, start doing projects. Now, when it comes to project, don't try to do something over complicated, right? Like you're not going to build a Netflix or Amazon just as soon as you start just like learn a language. Uh, start with something simple in my honest opinion uh, feel free to copy like copying isn't bad what is bad is not learning while doing so so go ahead go to your favorite youtube channel see what they're doing and like try to learn from project like this one of my favorite youtube channels that did this a senior introduced me to it was the coding train and they basically made like very simple projects like and did like full life 40 50 min minutes videos and they were like very interesting to watch and very well guided. It was live programming sessions and stuff. So that's a recommendation from me. Uh, simple projects that you can start off with would be like something like a game of tic-tac-toe, something like a game of snake, something like a URL shortener. Very simple things, uh, but you know exactly, like you can visualize how it would look. It's not very tough to find the logic of how tic-tac-toe or a snake game works, or even how a URL shortener might work. Like you had a short number might be a little complicated with the logic, but you get my point. So start off with simple projects, get an essence of what a UI is, like try to build a UI, try to, uh, and all of this can be done in any of these languages, right? Like you can build a snake game in Java, C++, Python. You can build a tic-tac-toe in Java, C++, Python. So your language is not your barrier here. You just need to go out there and start off with making simple projects. Make a login page, for example, if you, if you want to try something different. And just like try new things when it comes to projects, try simple things, look into YouTube, look into the internet and do projects. They are one of the best way to learn 
coding and basically the its practical implications in the world and the more projects you do the more you learn the more problems you solve on lead code the better your understanding of algorithms and logic building gets and both of these things put together make you an excellent software engineer last but not the least be patient have the mindset that you have started to learn something new and it is going to take time uh when i began initially i used to get frustrated a lot like even i i know if i would start again i would also get frustrated but being patient is the key whenever you got a wrong answer when you are solving things on lead code and are just stuck there it's extremely frustrating when you are trying to do a project and you get an error message on a line number that does not even exist in your code it's so frustrating but the joy of getting the right answer and the joy of seeing your code compile successfully is much bigger than that so trust the process try to learn from basically people who have done things the right way right so for example you get stuck on a on a question on lead code you just can't get the bug out look into the discuss section of lead code see what others are saying see how they have solved the problem and you might get your way out of it uh, you might be getting a tla you might just find a new optimized way of doing it you learned something new you might be getting a wrong answer and you might find a loophole in your logic there you learned something new same thing when it comes to doing projects you get a error message in line number that does not even exist in your code look it up on stack flow stack overflow i'm not even kidding just copy the entire message put it on google press enter press the first link that comes up it's definitely going to be a stack overflow link and you're going to get your answer you will find a lot of people having discussion on the thing on why it works and why it does not what you're doing wrong you know sometimes the solutions are as stupid as hey i have the wrong version of python and is thought hey i just think that i did i forgot to import the right library he i have imported two libraries and both the library have the same function things like these and which like you don't know because it could be of any reason but now you know because you looked it up another thing is whenever you don't get your mind around something youtube is the place to come to like for me it was and i, I know again and any time i start learning something new it always is You, I can't understand a data structure. I come to YouTube. I can't understand a solution to a problem. I come to YouTube. I'm try. I want to. I have a project idea, but I don't know how to do it. I come to YouTube because somewhere out there has probably done it and put it on YouTube. And most often they're not. That's the case. And I just see, understand, and then try to do things my own way. And that's a very enriching experience that I would do any time. But all of this requires a lot of patience and having the right mindset. that hey i am this is going to take time and i need to do this the correct way so before i close off this video i want to talk about something once you've gone through this entire process of starting to learn a language to doing projects doing lead code now you can solve easy questions on lead code comfortably you're in the territory of medium questions you have done a lot of simple projects you are in the territory of more complex projects uh the best way to learn more and expand your experience is via internships Now, when I say an internship, it can be anything. You can get an opportunity in something like a fang. You can get an opportunity under a professor. You can get an opportunity in a different college. You can get an opportunity in a local startup. You can get an opportunity in an emerging company coming up. It can be anything. It's just working with people who are better than you gives you a new perspective and helps you grow. And I guess that experience is probably one of the best and most healthy ways of becoming a software engineer. a uh, a better coder and understand systems better whenever it comes to computer science uh so having said that all the best to your coding journey if you have any questions feel free to drop it in the comments please like the video and share it with your with your uh, friends and do subscribe to the ch channel thank you and see you again in a different video